Tell him you're not here yet. Oh, he said he might be late. Something to do with the kids. Ashford Lee Police Station. Oh, sorry, I'm late. How'd you? Had to drop Peter off. Okay. I don't want to know. I need you here on time. Hey, excuse me, Sarge. Uh, bread van's been sold on the council estate. What? Uh, two men on a motorbike, goggles, crash helmets. Uh, there was cash on the van. Folk pay their bills today. Uh, Sarge, uh, since I've started living on the estate, I've worked out that you can get some good gossip. And there's this problem family, uh, recently been rehoused. Mushrooms, they're called. Well, they have motorbikes. Uh, lots of people have motorbikes. You two, you best get over there. Sarge. Treat, having me breakfast made for me. It's my pleasure. I love it when you stay over. <sighs> You're still not happy with it? Well, I do landscapes to pay the bills, but they seldom make me happy. Then paint something that will. There is something I like to paint, which would make me very happy. What's that then? You. I'd love to do a life study, full length. What, me? In the nude? <laughs> You've got to be joking. Yeah. Toast? Please. <laughs> Have you seen Bellamy's report on last week's Strensfield traffic accident? Uh, he's got some more details to check, Sarge. He's got a lot on his plate now, with uh, Debbie being away. Personal matters should not be allowed to interfere with duty. He knows that perfectly well. Absolutely right, Sergeant Major. <laughs> Still a stickler for discipline, I see then, Millie. <laughs> Good heavens. <laughs> Hello, sir. No sir nowadays. Just plain Mac. Alf, this is my old CEO, Captain Mike McKenzie. Alf, how do you do, sir? How do you do? What on earth are you doing here? Oh, believe it or not, I came to see you. Need a chat. What are you up to this evening? Well, uh, normally, after shift, uh, I drive home to York. Well, you telephone that lovely wife of yours, give her my regards, and tell her you'll be late tonight. I'm at a pub, the, um, uh, Aidens Field Arms. Mm -hmm. Expect you for a drink about seven-ish? Yes, sir. Uh, Mac, <laughs> of course, I'll be there. See you later. Control to Delta Alpha 2-4. Any news on the stolen van, Rob? Yeah, Alf, the van driver thinks the bike they used might have been a BSA. It's possible the family Phil was on about, the Motron. I've got a BSA. Yeah, I'll check when I get there. Well, if they do, probably best to have a word with them. All right, will do, Alf. Out. Four brothers. None of them working. Mother ran off. Father's in the nick. Would they risk a theft this close to home? I wouldn't put it past them. Hello, Seth. A bread van was stolen. Street next to yours, 8.30 this morning. Two men on a motorbike. I heard. It's quite funny, is that? Funny? Where were you at the time? In bed, asleep. Your BSA's been ridden this morning. Well, that's what it's for, isn't it? Our Billy went for some fags. What time is that, Billy? Way after the van was nicked. He had no to do with it. Well, how would you know if you were in bed asleep? Because so was he. I woke him up to go and get me the fags. All right. Better be gone already. The well, shift did finish five minutes ago. I was waiting for his report about the bread van. I told him I'd do that. Phil reckons that the Mottram family might know something. And? They've denied any involvement. They do have a bike similar to the one used by the thieves, but we've nothing else to suggest it was them. Well, when the van turns up, scenes of crimes might be able to tie them into it. Right, I'm off. Have a good evening, all. Blimey. He smiled. What's up with him? Oh, uh, Millie, do you mean? His old CO from the army showed up. Calls him Millie. Two old comrades. Old comrades. Don't often see you in here, Sarge. I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine, Captain Mike McKenzie. Rob Walker, one of my constables. Rob? Hi. Come on, then, Rob. Spill the beans. Tell me what he's like as a copper. 
I have to admit he made a damn fine soldier. Well, if I want to keep my job, I better admit he makes a damn fine police sergeant as well. <laughs> I'm in the chair. What are you having? Uh, thanks, but I'm meeting someone. Oh, she's here now. Excuse me. He seems like a bright young chap. Oh, he's nobody's fool. So, I'm intrigued. What really brings you here? <laughs> um, how about we pop into the snow? I've been going through the diary looking for potential dates. Me too. Let's finish our drink and compare notes. I want you to join me in an exciting, lucrative new venture. Really? Good Lord, doing what? Forgive me for saying so, but it seems that your... your career might have stalled a bit if they've posted you out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's not that bad. Well, still, life must be a bit of a struggle on police pay, wife, kids. We get by. How would you like to make some real money? Go on. I've had this idea for... for a commercial outward bound type enterprise here on the moors you know using army know-how to motivate motivate people to to acquire survival techniques you know rock climbing uh, setting up camp compass reading develop their initiative to cope with life's problems not a bad idea no national service now might be just what the youngsters of today need i've researched it i've had loads of interest universities top public schools big business uh, i have a contact in the city and he is prepared to fund the setup. I can guarantee, guarantee, to double your present salary. Blimey. You are exactly the calibre of right-hand man I need with me on this, Millie. What do you say? Well, the girls are the problem, keeping them occupied. And now Phil's got to work this weekend. I mean, I can take care of Peter here, but I can't have the girls under my feet. Well, maybe I could pop over and see them then. We've got too much on, Rosie. We've got a telly and a record player, haven't they? A telly? Is that what folk do nowadays? Just plonk them down in front of the telly? Oh, that's terrible, Bernie. Well, I hear it's very educational. You see, I, I prefer the radio to the television. Because you, you don't have to look at the radio. You see, when I was little, I used to play for hours and hours with a couple of pine cones and a box of matches. You know, <laughs> no, making little animals. And then we used to explore the forest. Whew. If they were my kids, I could show them a thing or two. Why don't you then? I would, but uh, I'm busy. Oh, you, you're all gone and no dinner. Anyway, they're modern kids, you born to bits. Rubbish! Me and our David could give him a proper day out. Oh, well, that's good of you, Peg. I'll tell Phil you volunteered then. <laughs> Done a good few years in the force now. It'd be hard to throw all that away. And there's retirement to consider. I'm less than three years away from drawing a full pension. George, money will not be an issue. I can guarantee your financial future, understood? That's a very tempting idea. The thought of working under you again, sir. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be alive today. What? You saved my life when you took out that sniper at Villa Bacage. Oh, nonsense. No. We all watched each other's backs in those days. That's why I want you on board. Someone I can trust. That's a very tempting thought. I'll talk it over with the wife. I'll give you my thoughts tomorrow. Yes, sure. <clears throat> so, um, keep in touch with any of the old crowd these days? Not since the last reunion. <laughs> Alain Alamein. Normandy. Berlin. <sighs> what days they were, eh? Aye. What days? There's no need, Rosemary, honestly. You've lost your glasses, Bernie, and you're not driving home. Come on, I'll give you a lift on my bike. I'm not going on that thing.
Okay, let's play. The Donkey Sanctuary Weekly Lottery. Let's play to win the £5,000 super draw like Emma and Ray. Let's play for the £1,000 weekly jackpot that'll have you rolling in it. And let's play to make a donkey's day. Because every play makes every day better for donkeys. You'll help us love and care for donkeys all around the world. So play the Donkey Sanctuary Weekly Lottery for just £1. Call the number on screen to play now. Win our £5,000 Super Draw. There are hundreds of cash prizes up for grabs. You could take home the £1,000 Weekly Jackpot. Like our latest winner, Asha. Hey, let's all play the Donkey Sanctuary Weekly Lottery. Call 0800 0382 511. Text Donkey to 70362 or search Donkey Lottery now. Now, it's never easy losing a loved one, but it's even worse if you've also got worries about how to pay for the funeral. That's where Sun Life's guaranteed funeral plan can help, because it guarantees to cover the cost of your chosen funeral services. Sun Life's funeral plan is one of the UK's most affordable, and their roots go back over 200 years. Help protect your family with a guaranteed funeral plan. Call Sun Life today and get your free welcome gift card. At Paddy Power Bingo, it's all about having fun while also playing responsibly. So let's have some fun with those bingo calls. How about number four, wags at war? Five and four, pied once more. But we wouldn't change everything. 22, two little ducks. Classic. Paddy Power have created online tools that can help you stay in control of your play. You can set deposit and time limits and remind us to take breaks. Paddy Power Bingo, please enjoy responsibly. I can't believe my little girl was going to be made to sleep with a grown man. I can't believe it's happening to innocent little girls. It's just terrifying. It's just absolutely shocking that there are girls out there who are having to go through this. Right now, innocent young girls are being forced to suffer FGM. They're being made to marry men sometimes more than three times their age. And they're dying giving birth to children because they're just children themselves. Child marriage is wrong on so many levels. There is no getting away from that. You have to confront that. That's why I knew I had to sponsor Anna. Please, will you sponsor a girl too? So many need you to stand by them. Just text Stan to 70365 and sponsor a girl right now. I sponsor a child called Sarah, who's aware of her rights, who aspires to go to university. She's aware that she has choices and options in life. She has a brighter future. To receive letters and then to complete the experience by visiting Sarah in her community has been amazing. Our sponsors change lives, and you can too. Just text Stan to 70365 or search Stand With Her. I just want Katia to grow up and be a strong, independent woman, to stand up for herself and to be anything in the world that she wants to be. It's a marriage. But we've both got family complications, so we'll keep it simple, right? Um, yeah, you know me. I prefer it when it's just the two of us. They broke in at the back. I've secured it as best I can. The only thing that seems to be missing is a paint sprayer and a compressor. Would you recognise him? Well, he was wearing goggles and a helmet. What about the bike? Um, it was a BSA with a sidecar. Are you sure about that? Yeah, 650, I'd say. I had a dodgy looking bloke in here about three weeks back. He rode a BSA asking about prices for a respray. I think he was off the Ashfordly estate. Do you remember a name? He didn't say. Come 
he's in here. Yeah, Peter, look who's here. Ah, see him. Give me a hug before you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having him, love. He's no bother, are you, Peter? Come here. Oh. Yeah, it's these two I'm worried about. Having to leave them on their own all day. Well, they don't have to be on their own, Phil. Peggy's off for 12 pounds. Right, where are they, then? Now, come on, girls. We're taking you out for a walk. Put some colour in your cheeks. I hate walking. Well, it is quite simple. You have to put one foot in front of the other. And how do you know you ain't walking, love, if you've never tried it? Come on, put your boots on. Very good of you, Peggy. Much better than them being on their own all day. Yeah, well, they deserve better. Although... There will be costs, of course. Well, giving them the dinner and that. I mean, I've got to make up a flask of soup. I've got to buy bread and cheese. I want a proper dinner. Fish and chips. And then, of course, there's the going rate for child-minding. You know, David and me, we've taken a day off work for this. Thank you. Come on, come on, don't just stand there. Chop, chop. Go on, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> you will. Trust me, I'm your dad. The house is in darkness. The motorbike and sidecar weren't there. They were definitely up to something then. Well, not necessarily. All I'm saying is that they're at. Rob, the thieves used the BSA bike as sidecar. Bernie tells us that somebody from the estate has been sniffing around for a respray. Has to be that. Uh, the CRO confirmed that two of the Mottrams had previous convictions for vehicle theft, Sarge. Well, it gives us reason enough to pay him a visit. You and I will do that, Walker. You two keep your eyes peeled for any likely place where they might have dumped a van. We did all that yesterday, Sergeant. Don't do it again today. Here. Oh, has your van got lost? Where are you, naughty van? Come here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Shouldn't we let the little lad play with that? Hi, Jack. I was thinking, how about a trip to the seaside this afternoon? <gasps> yeah, that'd be lovely. We'd like that, wouldn't we, Peter? Uh, well, I was thinking we might drop in on a friend of mine and have a look at his paintings. Oh, Peter might get a little bit bored looking at paintings, love. Maybe next time, eh? OK. I'll go on my own. <laughs> We'll do it some other time. What now? I see you've attached a sidecar to your motorbike. Well, that's what it's for, isn't it? It wasn't here last night, and nor were you. Where were you? That's none of your business. A sidecar and motorbike were used in a robbery last night. A paint sprayer was stolen. Ah, it's not to do with us. Then you won't mind if we take a look inside? Yeah, I do mind. You need a warrant for that. Abracadabra. I have a warrant to search your premises. This is dead boring. Stop complaining and keep up. Come on, then. What are you doing? I'm teaching you country ways. I don't believe in private ownership of the countryside, me. That's trespassing. Now, you, you're always saying things are all boring. Don't you want a bit of excitement? Come on. Oh, go on, David. You get through. <laughs> There's gamekeepers in there with guns. Get through, you great lummox. A bit of lead shot in the backside never did anybody any harm. We won't really get shot, will we? Not if you pay close attention to me. I'm an expert at this. Ah, it. Wished a time getting that warrant, wasn't it? And you might have wiped your feet before you come in. Good day to you, Mr. Motram. If they are leaving, they must have a place where they hide the stolen stuff. I want you and Younger on surveillance tonight. See if they go out again. If you think it's worth it, Sarge. Yes, I do. I don't like being smirked at. I laid this one a couple of days ago. You see, you need to get right in so as to be out of the gamekeeper's sight, but not so far as to stop the bird getting to the bait. <laughs> there you are. 
There's a nice plump one ready for the pot. for his dinner. Hey, we'll have ours and all. Get the grub out. So, you uh, were on the Normandy landings together? <laughs> Amongst other beauty spots. And you? Uh, I was with Lord Lovett's brigade at Pegasus Bridge on Orne River. Were you, by God? That was some show. Life around here must seem pretty quiet after that. Oh, it suits me. It was a very long time ago. But I still go down to the Legion every week. <laughs> Millie was saying there's very little contact between the police and the army here. Not really, no. Well, surely they must inform you if they're transporting slow-moving tanks or what have you round your patch. Well, division might get a memo, but there's really anything that ever affects us. Oh. Ah, I was just passing. Um, wondered if you'd had a chance to think it over. Come into my office. So, have I tempted you? I'm very flattered that you considered me, Mac. And because it's you, I've thought about it very seriously. But I'm afraid the answer's no. Money's very important, but it's not everything in life. The police service has given me a career and security. And I like the job. Well, I can't imagine there's much crime around here. Oh, you'd be surprised. We had a bread van nicked recently and the garage broken into last night. We have our fair share of villains around here. Still, you'll be missing a great opportunity. Maybe I've not been as adventurous or taken so many risks as you. My background, I suppose. Well, you took a lot of risks in the war. Yeah, it was different then. I have a wife and children to consider now. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky man. Marjorie and I, uh, we couldn't have kids. Marriage went wrong. Left me, in fact, two years back. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Oh, but, uh, it happens. But there comes a point in your life when you think, Taking a big gamble is uh, it's quite an attractive option. And from what you say, this is not so much of a gamble, this venture, is it, sir? What? No! No, no. No, of course not. But you know me. Uh, meticulous planning. I always like to cut down on the odds of failure. I'm sure you won't fail, sir. Well, the only thing I've failed at so far is getting you to stop calling me sir. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's not easy, Mac. You're a good man, Millie. The best. Nothing. They're indoors. Way up. Need some backup. Oh, he's fast asleep already. Peggy promised me she'd have the girls back by now. Oh, here they are. We had a brilliant time, Dad. Auntie Peg certainly showed us a thing or two about country ways. <laughs> Why don't you wash your hands? Tea's in the oven. You can sit down and tell us all about it, eh? Excuse me. 
me. Good here. Let's go. Of this land, you know, I declare total war on the pushing man. I'd cut him if he stands, and I'd shoot him if he'd run. And I'd kill him in the battle. Okay. And I'd get up, 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 get Let's under the van. See you back at the station. I shouldn't have got within 25 yards of you. All right, relax. The van's nearly ready for us, sir. Good. Bit risky uh, carrying out the theft in our zone of operation, but with the van breaking down, we didn't have much choice. Yes, I realise that. Luckily, I gather the police are assuming the locals are responsible for both the thefts. Oh, I, um, I sounded out Miller, dangled a carrot. Unfortunately, he didn't take it. He's not on for this, then? I couldn't risk it. He has a profound sense of honesty and integrity. I admire him for that. Pity, though. Would have been good for us to have a copper on the inside. Never mind. Our operation is still on track. We need one more piece of kit, and we're all set to help ourselves to a um, quarter of a million pounds. Will you be a dream maker today? When I grow up, I want to be a vet because I want to help sick animals. School jana jaruri hai ki padhe likh teacher ban jaye aur bachcho ke padhaye. I would like to become a pilot. Every young girl dreams about what she wants to be, but for a girl living in poverty, it's so much harder for her dream to come true. Boys are more likely to go to school, while too many girls are denied an education or forced to marry men up to three times their age and have babies even though they're still children themselves. Dreams are forgotten when you're a girl with no choices in life. But if you sponsor a girl with Plan International UK, you could help her achieve her dream. Text DREAM to 70233. Your sponsorship will help prevent child marriage, provide books, uniforms and safe places for girls to learn and educate boys so they grow up in a community that values girls. And the girl you sponsor will share her hopes for the future through the letters she sends you. Right now, a girl like Laudina is dreaming of an exciting future. I want to be a doctor. I would like to be splendid. Are you the dream maker who will help her achieve her dream? Please, sponsor a girl by texting DREAM to 70233 now or search DREAM MAKER. Thank you. This year there's a massive £220 million of prizes to be won. Judy, tell them what they can win in the February draws. Players in one postcode area will win a share of an incredible £7.9 million. Enter your postcode before midnight on the 20th of January to play. Wish we'd done it sooner. That's something that Acorn Stairlifts hears all the time. Too many people put off getting a stairlift until they simply can't manage without one. With an Acorn Stairlift in your home, you can go up and down the stairs whenever you like in safety and comfort. Carry on living safely and independently in the home you love and give Acorn a call on 0800 20 40 60 or visit acornstairlifts.com.
www.ghostbusters.co.uk. Don't be another one wishing you'd done it sooner. What will you see when you join us for this year's RSPB Big Garden Bird Watch? Over one million of us took part and spent time with Nietzsche last year. Join in and tell us how many birds you spot in an hour. More people than ever are getting involved. Be one in a million and help us understand how things are changing and how to help wildlife. I spy blue tits! Join in between the 28th and the 30th of January. For your free Big Garden Bird Watch guide, just call 0800 473 0257 or text bird to 88008. What will you see in your Big Garden Bird Watch? We'd love to know. Trespassing again, are oh, we? Oh, do give over, David. Now, remember, girls, you're not to tell your dad that I take you to these places. You've admitted to dealing in illegal cigarettes. Why not come clean on the van and the garage break-in? Because we didn't do those. You only admit to crimes you've been caught red-handed at. Is that what you mean? I mean, we don't admit to things we haven't done. You weren't at home the night the garage got done. Where were you? In Whitby. They're setting up the Siggy deal with the Spanish trawler guys. They've sailed now, we can't check that. Look, me and Billy have held his hands up to the fags. Can we just get this over with? Ashfordley Police Station. Oh. Ah, Sarge. Hello? Jeff confirms the other two Motron lads didn't leave the house at all last night. Right, well, I'm charging Seth and Billy with the cigarettes and opposing bail. Give us more chance to find the van. Hold on a sec. Uh, Sarge, it's Bill Galloway from Galloway Farm. He reckons that one of their old tractors was stolen last night. Bread vans, tractors? What is it with the thieves round here? Never crossed me mind folk could come in the night and steal it. Is it worth out? Nah. It's an old Ford's and pre-war. How fast does it go? Ten mile an hour we are following wind. You can't take it far any road. Not enough paraffin in it. I came to apologise for yesterday. I know me looking after Peter has been getting in the way a bit. It's not that, Gina. It's I'm older than you. And sometimes I worry that I'm not offering you the life you want. Like playing with dinky toys, you mean? <laughs> no, not exactly. No, but maybe, maybe you want your own kids, a family, I don't know. Believe me, right now I'm just glad when I get Peter back to his dad. Pull and pints is relaxing in comparison. Yeah, well, you do make a tasty bar, mate. Um, landlady, if you don't mind, my name's above the door. It might not be much, but it means a lot to me. Well, it's more than I've achieved. My name's not above any door. Art's my life. And here I am banging out sterile landscapes. Come on, you're good. It's just a phase. You'll find inspiration again. And you never know. I might just pose for your painting. Right. Shortwave radio intercepts confirm an army payroll convoy will pass along this road at 1100 hours approximately tomorrow. It will be guarded by the RMP because it's carrying the month's pay for two brigades of infantry on NATO exercise in the North Riding. We intercept here and relieve them of their cargo in the region of a quarter of a million pounds. Now, the deterrent factor should be enough to be used as a last resort. We'll leave now to wreck the spot where we hit them. When we return, the vehicles at this base will be moved to operational positions for tomorrow. Understood? Sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Look what I found! Someone's camping here! Yeah, it's a pretty well disguised camp and all. I mean, you're nearly on it before you spotted it. Oh, it must be soldiers, it's an army camp. What? On manoeuvres or something? 
Come on, let's go, girls. It's better if nobody knows that we've been here, especially your dad. My intelligence is the convoy will consist of the payroll lorry and two escort Land Rovers. We'll take out the lead Land Rover first and then the one at the rear. Once isolated, we'll commandeer the lorry and bring it up here. Well, we transfer the payroll into the resprayed van in double time. Eric will then drive it to the agreed rendezvous. Questions? From Tobruk to Berlin, we fought and never failed to take our objective. We will not fail tomorrow. Hey, here he is. Come on, little fella. Oh, brilliant to see you. Hey, hope you've been a good boy for your Auntie Gina. Of course yeah. he has. He's been no trouble at all. Oh. Come on, then. Should we get you back see those girls? Yes. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs> Hiya, Jack. Hey, you're a lucky man, Jack. One of a kind, that Gina. Don't I know it? I don't know. Jack, I've been thinking. I was serious. If you feel me posing for you, might help you, then I'll do it. Look, I really am quite shy, you know. So I'll do it. I'll do it for you. I don't want anybody else to see it, right? Of course. Do you promise? I promise. Come on, girls. Get a move on. Come on. Stop, stop. Your dad will be wondering where on earth you've got to. Ah! Yeah, Nick. I've checked motoring organisations, garages, car parks. No reports of an abandoned van anywhere, Sarge. If it was just the cash on board they were after, you'd have thought they'd have dumped the van by now. Unless it was the van itself they were after. Sure. I don't know, maybe they stole the respray gear to change its appearance. Right. Who would want a respray bread van? Lord Ashfully's gamekeeper has caught Peggy Armstrong poaching. Phil Bellamy's girls were with her. Give me strength. I trusted you, Peggy. I paid you to look after them. Well, the girls didn't do any poaching. That was just us. Take them home, Bellamy, and make sure they don't get into any more mischief. Not you! I'm arresting you both for poaching. PC Walker will take you to the cells. I must be mad. No. Right. Well, lie down on the settee. Make yourself comfortable. Mm -hmm. Crazy. She'd never have trusted you with that woman. Yeah, well, it was much better than school. She taught us lots. She taught you how to break the law. She's in jail now. Yeah, well, it's not fair. One rich landowner having all that to himself. Doesn't mean that you've got the right to go in there and take what you fancy. We're not the only ones. There are others in there as well. What do you mean? Girls? Come on. Who else was in there? We found a secret camp. Two tents, a van, and a tractor. They were all covered up. A tractor and a... Where was this? I'm not sure which part of the woods we were in. I suppose Peggy'd know. Now, let me get this straight. You want me to tell you exactly where in the woods we saw that van and that tractor? Yes. It's very important. Well, I'm not entirely sure I remember. I mean, it's a big place, them woods. But if I could remember, what would I get in return for assisting the police? I might be encouraged to let you off with an official caution. And it was definitely here? Yeah. Can you tell us exactly what you saw? Uh, a van and a tractor, two tents, four sleeping bags, all covered up with camouflage netting and stuff. 
What sort of tractor was it? It was an old pre-war Ford, sir. Tire marks, traces of paint, where they resprayed the van, possibly. You say it looked like an army camp? Yeah, yeah. We, we thought it might have been soldiers on manoeuvres. Yep, we see them go ahead. I'll let you off this time, but that's a final warning. Thank you, Sergeant. It's a pleasure to do business with you, Sergeant. Brigade HQ confirmed there aren't any army manoeuvres in the woods. However, they do have a convoy coming through this morning carrying a large payroll. A quarter of a million quid, guarded by military police. Go on. But this camp was struck pretty effectively overnight. What if whoever was here was planning to hold up that convoy today? With a tractor and a bread van? Well, in some way, possibly, yeah. You're talking about taking on the army, holding up the military police. Someone with inside knowledge. Ex-military personnel. It's not easy for me to say this, Sarge, but the thefts have coincided with your old captain being in the area. Are you seriously suggesting that Captain Mackenzie wants to rob an army payroll? The man's a war hero. He received the MC risking his life for his country. Yeah, but I gather he hasn't made the success in civil life. He may have recruited ex-soldiers to gamble on a daring robbery with him. This is pure speculation. He did seem particularly keen to learn about army police contact up here, Sarge. This may be all nonsense. There may not even be a robbery planned. But I'm beginning to get a very uneasy feeling. Then we ought to make sure, Sarge. The payroll's due through any time. Located their frequency. En route about 20 miles away. At 30 miles an hour. ETA. 40 minutes. Right. Mike one into position. Tractor to field gate. Make today great, Britain. Today's going to be great because I'm playing the Poppy Lottery. There's a weekly jackpot of £2,000 and £20,000 to win with the Super Draws. There are 400 cash prize winners every Friday. And it helps the Royal British Legion support our brave servicemen and women. What a great British thing to do. Call the number on screen or text Lottery to 70020 to enter through your mobile. Soon, I could be dropping you off at the airport to go on holidays. Going anywhere nice? Or maybe I'll be seeing you down the shops. Go on, treat yourself. And you'll be helping the Royal British Legion support our service community. Britain's bravest need you. Play the Poppy Lottery for your chance to win £20,000. Just call 0800 144 5420. Text lottery to 70020 or search Poppy Lottery. Play now and make today great, Britain. This summer, holidays are go with Jet2 Holidays. So go with one million free child places available. And 22 kilograms of baggage included. Don't miss out. Book now with just a £60 deposit per person. Holidays are go with Jet2 Holidays. Package holidays you can trust. After and all protected. Now, it's never easy losing a loved one, but it's even worse if you've also got worries about how to pay for the funeral. That's where Sun Life's guaranteed funeral plan can help, because it guarantees to cover the cost of your chosen funeral services. Sun Life's funeral plan is one of the UK's most affordable, and their roots go back over 200 years. Help protect your family with a guaranteed funeral plan. Call Sun Life today and get your free welcome gift card. This baby bear is terrified. 
torn from her mother's paws at a tender age. They will force her to live alone in a tiny, filthy cage, like so many bears driven mad by loneliness, rubbing their wounds raw against the bars, suffering cruelly day after day, year after year, just for people's entertainment. Four Paws found little Potap crammed into a tiny, squalid cage. He'd been there for almost nine years, lonely and isolated. There are so many more young bears who need your help. Please call 0800 038 0491 or text CUB8 to 78866 and give two pounds a month to help rescue them. Every month, your two pounds could help us free more bears, help give bears the veterinary care they need and help them live happy, healthy lives in the freedom of our natural sanctuaries. Call 0800 038 0491 or text CUB8 to 78866 and give two pounds a month and help four paws free bears from agonizing torture. Please, don't leave these bears to suffer for a single day more. About 800 yards. Right, take over as traffic command. Intercept or chat. Talk them in. Right, stand by and go. Negative. You've only got 20 miles to travel. I'm just at Brigade HQ. Radio contact. The convoy has been lost. It may have been deliberately jammed. Now, their last known position was 852017. That's where the old drover's road meets the valley. So it gives them three different ways out. this, but I wouldn't mind. Larry! 
Jeffrey's up there. Come on. Come on, then. Yes. Come on. As you are. Okay. Yes. Two to all units. Glory on fire. Groover's road is blocked. About a mile, we hit the main road. Look, sir. A copper. Drive at him. He'll give way. this to be on your patch, but it was the best place to hit them. Why? Why ruin your life for this? <laughs> My life is ruined already. I'm bankrupt, I'm divorced. Things haven't gone too well, I'm afraid. Why resort to this? Ah, oh, couldn't resist one last. Hurrah! Show them I've still got what it takes. Give me the gun. You know me better than that. Move your car. Come on, let me take my chances. I think you owe me that at least. Come on, Millie! I saved your life, remember? No. You want to get by me? You're going to have to use that. Don't be a bloody fool. Wait! Move Millie's car! <laughs> Hold it! No! You hold it! Get down! Down! On your face! Now! Miller? Move the car, or he gets a bullet. Stand still! Stand very still! I'll kill him. I'll kill him. And in the battle's blazing heat, the just cause shall prevail. Your speech, Captain, to the men before the Battle of El Alamein. Damn you, Miller. Damn you to hell. Thank you, sir. Michael McKenzie, I'm arresting you for robbery. There's police cars all over the place. Where is it then? Understand, it's not finished. I understand. Do you like it? As a painting. It's important to me that, that you do. Jack, it's brilliant. It's the best you've done. <laughs> you alright, huh? You took a bit of a risk, didn't you? You fight next to a man for five years, you get to know him. I could never pull that trigger. I knew that. I'm glad you did, Sergeant. And you should have seen it when the lorry exploded. I thought we'd had it. Yeah, but it was our discovery that foiled it, wasn't it, David? 
I suppose so, in a way. There you go. No, oh, Rob, it's true, isn't it? You'd never have caught them without us. Yeah, that's right, you saved the day. And we have given great service to the community. Now, surely that deserves a little reward of some kind. Don't push your luck, Peggy. I can't believe Sergeant Miller waited to call his bluff. He was sure he would never have pulled the trigger. Easy for him to say. Listen, I hope this isn't going to give you second thoughts about marrying a copper. Too late now. You're getting married on Saturday. And we'd like you and Gina to be our witnesses. Please, what are you doing? Me and my sisters are organising a party for afterwards, but Rob and Helen mustn't know anything about it. Helen's mum and stepdad. Hello. My sisters. Preparations are almost all sorted. It's time then for the main man to exit stage right, perhaps. Is he heading east? He's Doc Martin. Here next. <laughs>